show you my toys. Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the Diamond Select, the real Ghostbusters Winston Zedmore figure. This is a figure from the real Ghostbusters, which is a cartoon from the mid 80s. I personally was raised off this line from Kenner as a kid and had all the figures, all the vehicles, all the ghosts, all the different variations. So I've been looking forward to getting these guys. This is Series 9 of the Diamond Select Ghostbusters line. Series 1 through 5 were all from Ghostbusters 1, the film, and they all made a rooftop diorama from the end of the film, Collect and Connect. Series 6 through 8 were Ghostbusters 2 figures, and they started the Ghostbusters Firehouse diorama front of it. And this is Series 9. Series 9 and 10 both are going to be from the real Ghostbusters, and they're going to finish off this diorama. I cannot wait to see it finished. Now, as you can see, the packaging is a little bit different. It's blue instead of the traditional kind of darker Ghostbuster colors. Select, real Ghostbusters, the cartoon logo. Winston, different head sculpt in his light blue outfit from the cartoon. Side, we go Winston, the figure. Back, we see the rest of the wave, which is Slimer, Egon, and Winston. Cannot wait to complete this thing in its entirety. Still have at least another full wave, which is going to be a couple months out. Nothing on that side, nothing on the top, nothing on the bottom. So what are we waiting for? Let's get this guy open. Alright, well now we've got Winston out of the package. Here he is with his all of his accessories laid out in their entirety. We will get a little bit of a closer look at them shortly, but he's got a combined total of six hands. I've put the two that I want to keep with him on him. Then he's got his cartoon style trap, PKE meter, and completely new colored proton stream. So this guy here, pretty nice looking. It's a completely new head sculpt for Winston, different than the movie one. Light blue outfit, colored like the real Ghostbuster cartoon, different than the movie. He's got his proton pack, completely different than before. Love the colorfulness of it. He's got his little logo on the side from the Ghostbusters. Love the detail in this guy. A lot of nostalgia here. I had this figure as a kid and now as an adult I have a more detailed version. Alright, let's take a peek at his accessories. He has a combined total of six hands, four that are gloved and two that are ungloved. I decided to take the hands that I want to keep him with, which are the two semi-open ones that can hold the proton pack, and they can also be doubled as fists, and I put those hands on him. The rest of the hands will go into my fodder pile. He did come with two completely open hands, could be nice to have one on his left hand supporting the proton pack, but they're going to go in my fodder pile. And then he's got two ungloved hands. Could definitely be useful for future action figure swapping. In addition to that, he's got the PKE meter. This is cartoon styled. I had a life-size one of these as a kid. I was at Ghostbusters for at least one, if not a couple different Halloweens. This brings back a lot of memories. Here it is compared to the movie version. The movie version's a lot smaller, kind of more realistic looking, completely different style, but still kept the sort of essence of it. Then he's got his real Ghostbusters trap, blue colored. It's got a nice little pedal here. I remember having a life-size one of these as a kid as well, and it had an air pump. You could step on the pedal and it would open up the trap. Here is the cartoon trap compared to the movie trap. It's a completely different sculpt. The movie one is a lot larger. The cord is a lot longer on the movie one and the pedal is completely different. There's also the open movie trap which is mostly made with the same sculpt as the unopened one. And then now we also have the real Ghostbusters cartoon version. Next, let's check out Winston's Proton Pack and Yellow Proton Stream, completely new color scheme we've never seen before. So it holsters on a lot differently than before and it is a completely different sculpt. Here he, here's the Proton Pack compared to the movie version. Like I said, completely different sculpt, completely different paint job. This one here holsters on through this little half circle, just clips in there very nicely and stays really with ease. So much better than the other releases. The original one had this sort of little triangle piece up here and it would connect onto there with this small sort of triangle piece here. You have to just get it on there just right. This is from wave one, the hardest of the waves to get to stay on there. Love the advancement that they've made with this. 
as you can see, I'm having a really hard time getting this done on screen. There we go. So it holsters like so on the original, considerably different than the new one. Here he is holding his proton pack ready to go. Now I will say this clip piece here is a little bit different than the previous releases. It's a little bit fatter to accommodate the front of his proton weapon. Once you attach it, it actually looks really cool, kind of different than any of the other ones. Love the way it looks, but it's not going to be interchangeable with the previous proton pack as that clip is not going to fit on properly. Here is the real Ghostbusters proton stream from Winston compared to the movie release. The yellow one, unique, is for the cartoon, and this is sort of the standard movie release down below. Next, let's see how much reuse was made between the movie figure and the cartoon figure. Let's start from the bottom and go to the top. Their feet are definitely identical, painted a little bit differently. The bottom part of their legs are also identical, except the movie version has this little tube coming out of him. The proton pack is completely different, sculpted and painted differently from the weapon to the backpack to the actual shoulder straps and the waist straps and even the accessories included on them are considerably different. So completely different there. The torso, the hands, the arms, they're all identical but painted differently. And of course the head sculpt is considerably different on these two guys. Next on the agenda let's check out how tall this guy is. These diamond select toys are traditionally on the seven inch scale. They're on the larger side of things, pretty big figures. This guy here looks like he's sitting at just under seven and a half inches, about 7.4 inches tall. Next on the agenda, let's check out his articulation. If you've been collecting the Ghostbusters line or other NECA lines, you pretty much know what you're gonna get and it's a standard articulation for them. So his head, can go around, absolutely no problem. Can go up only that far and then down only that far. His proton pack is not attached, it's loose. If you were to slide these off, you can get that off, but to get this bottom part off, you'd have to either cut it or heat it and stretch it up and pull it off him, but it is not actually physically attached. It can be removed. So he's got his shoulders, they go out about that far. Can go up all the way around, no problem. He's got single jointed elbows. The joint is hidden by his elbow pads pretty nicely. He's got his wrists, they can go around, and just a tiny bit of up and down motion here. He's got his ab crunch, which is, is pretty decent once you get it going. Can allow him to look down that far with his head, then look up that far, not too bad. He's got a waist swivel below that, only goes from side to side, doesn't have a ball in there. Then he's got his hips, they go out about that far, can pretty much do the splits. They go forward, not quite 90 degrees. They go back, pretty much not at all. He's got a thigh cut here. He's got double jointed knees, can go all the way back. And then his feet, they can go up about that far, then down about that far. They do rock and tilt, which is pretty nice. It's for stability and achieving certain poses. Here he is compared with the rest of the wave. This is series nine, the first series with the real Ghostbusters cartoon figures. You can see Egon and Winston and Slimer. Slimer's a lot smaller than those guys are. Winston and Egon both have the blue outfits. Winston in the light blue and Egon in a also light blue, but a little bit less light of light blue. Here he is compared to the rest of the Winston Diamond Select Ghostbusters figures that I have. Here's the first movie figure right here, cartoon figure. Ghostbusters 2, we're back figure with the Santa hat and proton pack, and then the Ghostbusters 2 slime blower Winston. Here is Egon and Winston with their proton streams trying to take down a ghost. So this is the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse as it is before any of the figures from this wave. This is from the first three waves, six through eight, from the Ghostbusters 2 figures. You can see I had to sort of prop something below it just to make it stand up on its own. It just kept falling, if not. We're still missing three bottom pieces, I assume, and three top pieces. Really hoping this wave comes with the three bottom pieces so this thing can stand on its own. Cannot wait to get this thing finished. Let's see what it looks like with some of the pieces from this wave. So here are the two Collect and Connect pieces that Winston comes with. This looks like it's going to be the very center of the bottom, I'm going to attach to this piece if I were to guess. And then this is going to attach to Egon's other piece here. Of course I can't do anything with these guys until I get some more of the top of the firehouse. 
Let's go and attach them, get some more stability here, make some more progress toward completing this thing. Here we go, here it is with Winston sidewalk piece connected as well. I like that the sidewalk goes a little ways out so you can display your figures on here. This is going to end up going as part of my Gotham City Batman huge city diorama setup. Looking really nice so far. Now here's the Ghostbuster Firehouse diorama front with all of the pieces except for Series 10 which is not out yet together. We've got two thirds of the bottom together and one third of the top together. This thing actually measures up to be a little bit over 22 inches. You have 22 and a half inches tall. Cannot wait to get the last wave, which is expected out late February, early March area. Here are the two different Ghostbuster dioramas compared to each other. You can see the firehouse diorama is quite a bit taller, but the rooftop diorama is quite a bit wider as well as deeper. Barely fits on top of the bookshelf without hanging over, but for my purposes, it does work great and it is very sturdy up top there. Like I said, the rooftop is considerably deeper than the firehouse front. Here's a shot of them where they both started at the same position, and you can see how much further the other one goes than the firehouse. Both absolutely wonderful pieces will be great for my city dioramas. And I've actually completed two of these Ghostbusters dioramas from series one for my Batman world on top of the rooftops. Figures can be displayed on here overlooking the city, kind of hanging off the bookshelves, but it's been very sturdy for many years. Just so you have an idea of what I've been doing with these dioramas. Great for just regular city setups. This is where I have been keeping the Ghostbuster rooftop diorama, but I don't think it's going to continue to fit in this general location. It's on the back of this sort of cabinet thing that I use for the bar and whatnot, comedy club. And this is perfect on the back side to cover the blankness. The height is just a hair too big, and I think the overlap of this building, unless I move that building, it's not going to continue to work. But I'll figure something out. I do think the shame putting something so nice in such a small little alleyway. Overall, I must say I'm pretty pleased with this figure. The reuse of the sculpt does not bother me. I think Diamond sought out to achieve something and they sure did achieve it. I'm very content with this figure. This figure has a lot of nostalgia value. I had all the Kenner figures, I believe they were Kenner anyway, as a kid. And this guy really strikes home in a certain way for me. If you think you're interested in this figure, you probably are. If you want to have a seven inch scale, more adult collectible version of the five inch figure from your childhood, this is for you. If you started collecting the firehouse diorama you definitely have to get this wave to continue to complete it there's only one wave left i cannot cannot wait to see what it looks like thank you guys for watching this video this is d hunter if you like the video press like below if you want to see additional videos from me press subscribe if you have any additional action figure review requests post them below if there's anything that you liked or disliked about the video post it below thank you guys for watching this is d hunter talk to you guys soon